I'm Spencer Muzik, and joining me now is Tama Wong. She is a lawyer turned forager for Daniel, a much celebrated New York City <laughs> restaurant. Welcome, Tama. Thank you for joining us Thanks today. Thanks for having me. So, unless you're a foodie, you probably don't know what a forager does. So, let's just start there. What do you do as a forager? I actually didn't know what a forager was either. <laughs> when I first heard, I uh, when I first heard uh, the word forager, it was actually Daniel Boulud said, "How is foraging?" I sort of looked at him like a little nervous, anxiously, um, because I thought it. It reminded me of rummaging, like rummaging right, exactly. through something. I didn't really know what it was. Well, the image that comes to mind for me is looking for mushrooms, rare mushrooms oh, or something right, along right, those right, lines. Right. But what exactly do and you do? I do think some people, you know, that is foraging. But for my, myself, it really means finding um, or gathering plants from the wild, which okay. is what people did before they had agriculture. Well, and if anybody's ever picked berries from a bush, exactly. would that be considered? Yes, <laughs> see, that's foraging. So, we've so all you don't have to... Uh, you know, run around six miles in the woods to find a mushroom. Exactly, and, and I think <laughs> all of us have done it at some point in our lives. Uh, hopefully. You know? Yeah, exactly, So, but when did you begin foraging for wild plants? Um, I mean, I, I again, in in the w rough definition, being lawyerly, <laughs> how I define exactly, things, exactly. I would say that I foraged when I was a child, right. right? Because I picked berries, and my mother actually did force us to eat dandelion greens and things like that at, from time to time. Um, but when I started foraging more in earnest was when I had the, I started a project um, where I was really bringing things in every week um, on my off time or in between at lunchtime to restaurant Danielle. And that was like, you know, really seriously trying to find the culinary possibilities of wild plants. It wasn't at all a hobby though when you were still a corporate counsel at Merrill Lynch. Um, I never really, thought of it as a hobby, <laughs> you know, people think like if it's a hobby, it's something that's like sort of like stamp collecting or right, something. Exactly. So I think it was much more, I never thought of it in my mind as a hobby because it was much more of a passion, I'd say. It was something, and also it was something that I felt I was creating, it was, I was creating something of immense value and information. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if a lot of people think of a hobby that way. It was, it was something that was more you know, incredibly um, creative and investigatory. When did you do it much before you started bringing it into Daniel? Before then, um, I was really just, and I lived overseas for a long time. And so when I came back, I was just really interested in finding out what, I mean, I appreciated th this country after living in Asia for a long time, the space and how natural it is. And so I was looking in my backyard and trying to figure out what was there. I tried my hand at gardening, which I not very good <laughs> at. Um, so I wanted to see what was growing there naturally. And I, the more I got interested in seeing what was there, the more fascinating it was. So I just was really interested in the plants from a kind of stewardship perspective first, and then eating them is like the next step. Well, so how does it taste though? I mean, how does the taste of wild plants differ from cultivated plants? Oh, um, well, once you really hit to you, it's hard to go back because it's more, there's more flavor, it's more, flavor dense mm. and at the same time more nutrient dense and that's why chefs love it. What are the most surprising plants that you found to be edible? People and I and I would say I'd say the difference between edible and delicious again. So my lawyer <laughs> like splitting, you know, the categories. No, I appreciate but that. Um, I appreciate it. I, the, the most surprising thing is pine needles. Pine I needles. I never really? thought yes, I never thought I could eat pine needles. That's so. amazing. I should keep that in mind and this they're, holiday they're season. Really, <laughs> yes, they're, but it's all how you pick and prepare and at what time, just like anything else, right? Right, exactly. You know, you're not gonna pick a peach when it's green. You have to know like when's the best season. So that's why you know, I, I've been working with chefs to find out what's the best way to make it delicious. So walk us through your career path uh, after okay. you graduated from Harvard Law School. Um, so the first thing I did is I actually worked overseas. I worked in a Japanese, one of the big, they had Sogo Shosha in Japan. Mm. It's kind of an internship, people do clerkships. Yeah, I did I've, that I've as my clerkship. Yeah. yeah. And um, then I came back and worked at a law firm um, for a couple of years. And then I went and worked for Citibank. Um, and I went and from in New York, and then I went overseas. So okay. most of the time I've worked inside a corporate corporation as kind of business counsel slash management. Well, and tell us, about how did you become the official forager for, for Daniel? Oh, um, that was just because, I mean, I, I tried to think about it, you know, a lot of people ask me, so how did you decide to quit doing this? And it wasn't, it's not a decision, and I'd say it's very organic. Um, in that I didn't read something in some magazine and say, okay, so tomorrow I'm gonna start <laughs> becoming a forager. Right. Um, it was just, um, I, again, I was, I was um, actually consulting uh, for a client in, um, in Midtown. And so people had invited us for dinner there at the restaurant. Right. Um, and I didn't really know them that, no Danielle Balut or anybody there. So I was just eating and they had said, well, why don't you bring in some plants from your meadow that you know is, you know, 
grade and see what they can do with oh, it. I read somewhere that you only were able to identify two plants in the very beginning. So oh, yeah. how, where did all this well, knowledge come from? That's part of this from? lawyer obsessiveness. <laughs> to, attention to detail, <laughs> yeah. right? Once yeah, you kind exactly. of investigate something, you have to know more and more, right? right? Like if you're researching contract law or whatever, you know, you really get into it. So. Um, you know, if you're, if you're really focused, you just start to learn little by little, though. For anyone, you can start with two things, and then the next time you learn four things. And right, and continue. so it's basically because of your legal experience and background, though, that you were able to s sort of stick with it and, and work I, with it I in think such a, a lot. I don't think detail. I could have done this if I hadn't worked in business for maybe for 20 years. Oh, wow. Because I think it really brought a whole bunch of things together. Not only just, for example, the book, um, having to... Uh, translate and work with, you know, sort of fine dining and make it into something that people can make at home. Right, right, right. right. And then the whole logistics of the execution of it, coming up with principles about how, how to do it properly, mm -hmm. um, all kinds of things like that. Well, and it sounds like you keep building on this particular passion. You just mentioned your book. Can you tell us a little bit about the book that you co-authored? Um, so after we've been doing this project, you know, it was just a pure project because I wanted recipes and he wanted new new uh, ingredients, right? <laughs> so it was, and then I realized that he was just as committed and I mean, he would document everything and I would die. So we, we had tons of material. So um, it just was very fortuitous that um, foraging became something really in the forefront of sort of for foodies and for re a lot of restaurants. And so we already had all this information. Wow, ready to go. Yeah. That I mean, I think that's cool because it's certainly one thing to know what plants are edible, but it's another thing to know how to prepare them. Yes, so like th which ones taste good and which cheap. ones taste like cardboard. Exactly. <laughs> and keeping with this theme of building on this particular right. passion of yes. yours, you also created a company called Metals and More. Can you tell us what services does it provide? Yeah, so that... Um, I started started because I felt that, you know, I had learned a lot from people around me uh, because I live kind of in a, the rural part of New Jersey. Um, and a lot around me, there are people who are conservation group people, ecologists, and people who are interested in this. So I could tap into a lot of my neighbors and learn about um, how to create natural spaces. I mean, there also means it's low maintenance. So if you're <laughs> a busy lawyer life, you don't have to, you know, spend all this time on the weekend pruning and doing things. Right, right. Um, so I really wanted to share that information with people, and I didn't find that there was a lot of information there. So I created Meadows and More to help connect sort of scientific information um, that botanists would have or professionals to sort of no pe normal people, lay people, that didn't have all the sort of technical expertise and to make it easy for them. Uh, and finally, though, I want to ask you, because okay. I, I read that you said that you've seen significant health benefits with your family because of oh, right. foraging <laughs> for the foods that they eat. What are some of those benefits? Um, I mean, I'd say one of them is just being outside in a very unstructured way. I mean, for more than 15 minutes when you go into your car, <laughs> it's very rejuvenating, and it's a great way to spend kind of unstructured time with your family, I have three teenage daughters, mm -hmm. and sometimes you, th you don't want to really talk to them and say, okay, so what happened today? You let it come out in a more unstructured way. And I, the other thing is I think actually the food is really good. People are saying now we need, need more diversity. We need more plants and vegetables in our regular diets. And so it's really easy to go outside and, and just pick, just it pick up. a so couple it's healthier. Yeah. It's healthier for everybody right. then. Well, the company is Meadows and More. The book is called Foraged <laughs> Flavor. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Foraged Flavor. So uh, thank you very much, Tama, for joining us today. Oh, great. We really appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for having me. It's fun. For more information on this or other topics, log on to BloombergLaw.com. You can follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Thank you for joining us. Bye, everybody.